by the way. Throw him in there. Yeah. As well. Oh, what, what did Mitt say? He, well, Donald did Trump he and Mitt Romney did, did meet last him? night for a second time. Romney spoke to reporters after the dinner. Here's some of what he said. I was also very impressed by the remarks he made on his victory night. Uh, by the way, it's not easy winning. I know that myself. Uh, he did something I tried to do and was unsuccessful in accomplishing. He won the general election. Uh, and, uh, and he continues uh, with a, a message of inclusion and bringing people together. Uh, and his vision is something which obviously connected with the American people in a very powerful way. I happen to think that America's uh, best days are ahead of us. I think you're going to see America continue to lead the world in this century. And, uh, and what I've seen through these discussions I've had with President-elect Trump, uh, as well as what we've seen in his uh, speech at the, uh, the night of his uh, victory, uh, as well as the people he's selected as part of this transition, uh, all of those things combined uh, give me uh, increasing hope that uh, President-elect Trump is the very man who can lead us to that uh, better future. Looked a little pained having to make that statement last night. They had a nice dinner there at John George, I guess, in the Trump Hotel there. Very, very working class. There it is. It's like, <laughs> it's, you know, it's kind of like when King George was given, the six oh, was given man. a hot dog uh, at the Hyde Park. <laughs> frog's legs were on the menu. They were they? They had frog's legs at John George. Frog's yeah. legs. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. the menu. So Trump, yeah. Reince Priebus, you saw up uh -huh. there in the picture as well. So basically Romney's message when he came out there was, yes, I called him a fraud and a phony and campaign like my life depended on it against him <laughs> for a year and made this big speech speech and went out of my way, but I like what I've seen since he was elected. So I like what I've seen I can, in terms I can of saying the right things that. to maybe get no, the gig. No, I mean, I think everybody is at this point, or at least everybody who has a constructive part of their brain that actually cares about this country, you know, you campaign against them. We were, I mean, there were times I was very upset about things that happened during the campaign, but in the beginning, I mean, everybody should try and help for it to succeed. Not the media, but I mean... People yeah. like Mitt Romney, he's doing well, the right thing. Certainly Republicans. And well, they, I they, think they, Democrats ought to say we'd like to work with Republicans as well and not just start saying no. Well, I mean, you know, the Democrats have complained for eight years about the meeting that took place and, and Mitch McConnell, everybody that was trying to undercut Barack Obama from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, they should, you know, if they want to be different, if they want to be better, then they should do that. If they want to do the same thing they did, that's their business, but they can't do both. Can't do both. They can't complain about it for eight years and then do the but same thing. Exactly. I saw nothing wrong with that. Well, you know, Romney, though, the, really thing, nice. the, the thing is, Mike, um, I think Mitt Romney's doing what, you know, Ross Duthat said Republicans need to do. If you were offended by him, if you didn't like what he did, if you didn't like what he said, you have two choices. Stay away. Mm -hmm. And leave him to his own devices and a group of sycophants around him that will only feed in to his worst instincts or go in there and try to influence him for the better. And uh, you know what? I tip my hat to Mitt Romney for doing do that, despite the fact that he's being hacked to little pieces by all oh. these sycophants yeah. he's getting because crushed. he's trying to help this country. That's internally, uh, and obviously it's, re it's received a great amount of publicity, Kellyanne Conway going after Governor Romney that way. Mitt Romney spent the better part of eight or nine years running for president of the United States himself. He was disappointed twice. Uh, he wants this job, I think, and this job would be validation of his efforts to become president. It allows him to play a large role in the global scene. Uh, I think it'd, I think it'd, it'd be a great appointment for, I, for Donald Trump. I, I still think it'd be a great appointment. I mean, you know, Petraeus obviously impressed. Mm -hmm. I just you really have to think long and hard before you put a general at Secretary of State, a general at NSA, and a general at Defense. Absolutely. And Homeland Security. We would call that a military. Well, the there we'd is call that, that a military flex, hooter yeah. in South and, and, and South America. Homeland Security. And in Homeland Security. I think the general's thing reflects that it's the last unsullied institution in American life is yeah. the military. And huh. So there's an instinctive reach for that authority, but it's also a dangerous precedent because you also want civilians in control of the government. Right. And there are other good people in other institutions who can run these offices, except Mitt Romney included. You know, I, I don't disagree with you, except that the general's being spoken about, Petraeus, General Kelly, General Mattis. They were a little different than George Patton, Donald Trump's favorite general. I mean, Pattis, Madison and, and Kelly specifically, and Petraeus to a certain extent, are 
for lack of a better phrase, scholar generals. Right. I mean, they are fully invested in a whole Absolutely. lot of they other are. aspects of life yeah. other than just the military. Yeah. They're, they're brilliant. Absolutely. Just like Willie, you and I are scholar pundits. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. exactly. We've That's been not called. not what called I was that. thinking yeah. of. What we were saying yesterday is that if, if Mitt Romney takes this job, it would be a patriotic gesture. That's how he Absolutely. would look at it. And he's stepping forward maybe to yeah. put himself between Donald Trump and, and foreign policy of America. And there's some reporting in the Washington Post today that sort of backs that up and says he had friends emailing him right away saying you need to do this in the interest of the country put behind you we have Donald Trump as our president we know you don't like that but he's there now what can you do constructively what can you do proactively to help the country not necessarily help Donald Trump but help Steve the country Pagliuca. succeed Steve yeah. Pagliuca the owner of the Celtics right. yeah very close friend of Romney yeah. and right <clears throat> knows Donald Trump Michael Cranish has a great piece in the Washington Post about that today that you're looking at part of it right there in the yeah. screen it is about it, it, it is about patriotic duty. I think especially if you're a Republican, you can sit back and complain or you can get involved and, and try. But I agree, Democrats do. But I'm just I, I'm just saying I, I'm, I'm not going I'm not going to suggest that Democrats have a patriotic duty to get involved with the campaign when a no, lot of people are deeply I just offended. Think, I think I'm just saying though, we shouldn't knock anybody that goes in there to try to make things better. No, and I think there are legitimate concerns about some of the people who have been chosen in this transition. Mnuchin would be one of them, and yep. that's a great example of, um, I, I think, where folks on the left who have been working hard, um, putting things together like the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and mm -hmm. other efforts to try and protect the middle class and the people who are left out in the cold. I mean, that's and a Medicare, real conflict, and, and that, that should and be brought Tom up. Price. That and Tom Price. That and Tom Price. So you say Price. Tom Price is against Medicare? I think he's but for privatizing Medicare. Medicare. He's not against Medicare, but yeah. Medi <clears throat> that's going to be a fight. That's, that's going to be, be that's really gonna be when interesting. the Democrats are finally going to they're going to they're going to have to stand up or roll over. So, so Bush doing Social Security was the first step yeah. towards Democrats winning in 2006. Yeah. Right. I could see it happening here. Trump, yeah. Trump but, but, but Bush was an ideologue. Trump is not. Trump's not going to privatize Medicare. Or he's not going to. Let me say this. He's the best privatizer in charge of education. Let me say this. He's not, he's not going to try to privatize Medicare because he'll remember what happened with Bush. Maybe. And it's just not, he's, a de, he's been a Democrat for most of his life. He's just, I, I, I don't see him falling on that sword. I think you're right that, like, kind of, he personally, intellectually, does not have a beef with entitlements. Right. But he's putting people in and, place. And he do. said that, right? Yeah, but he, he said that in the campaign. Place you do. So, and he's we'll also see. he's also for universal health care, which most Republicans yeah. don't say they're for. <laughs> and if you're going to replace the Affordable Care Act, you're going to have to replace it with something to meet the president's elect's wishes that involves universal coverage. That's going to come right up against Tom Price and Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell. Well, which which is really good, the, the Republicans' greatest challenge. We were actually going back and forth about this yesterday, Nick. That that. The Republicans have the whole repeal thing down, and they have for years. <laughs> they just haven't put together an adequate replace uh, option that would actually provide Americans the same type of coverage you're getting on under Obamacare, but better. I mean, yeah. we all know, all of us know people now, Republicans, Democrats, independents, mm -hmm. that, have, um, that are using Obamacare now. 22 million people? Yeah. It's, not, it's a huge not going to take it away. And look, healthcare is expensive. There's no magic thing here, right? It costs money to cover these people. And most of the GOP plans on the table um, cover fewer people yeah. or cost more for older, sicker people. Right there. So hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.